maybe why, why, why? Let me check on my phone because usually when I come on here, it has me looking crazy. And then it's like, oh, you are already, Ms. Taylor. So let's see. Yeah, you are live. I'm live. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Zoom never tells me, right? I just be like live looking crazy. So, <laughs> okay. I have a lovely philosophy day. Let me make sure after all of this drama, thank you guys so, 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 so much for your patience and all of my uh, tech difficulties who's on the Zoom, my wealth creators. So I appreciate it. Let me also make sure that we are recording. Live. All right, let's get started. We're going to get this crack a lacking. Get your tax Q&As up and going with Ms. Falasha Day, our tax expert, to take some of your questions. I'm not sure if you saw the questions that were posted beforehand, but I can definitely read them off to you if you're okay with that. But really, the number one uh, questions were surrounding um, just overall changes. Yeah. that has transpired uh, with taxes, when they're due, what's going on. And even I got a lot of questions and um, about how to prep themselves financially as a small business to take advantage of some of these uh, loan funds that are available. Oh, that's tax. good. That's good. That's yes, good. I got a lot because they were like, I don't have an employees. I'm not even playing myself. I'm an escort. I'm an LLC. I was like, ooh, yes. Let's talk yeah, about that's, this. That's good stuff. <laughs> That's so just so you know, I cannot turn my video on at all. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So let's get going. If you don't know who Falasha Day is, she is our, um, I always like to say our resident tax expert. <laughs> she is a phenomenal um, tax expert, primarily focusing on businesses, small businesses. And she literally helps you build your business beyond just the bookkeeping aspect. And if you've ever heard anybody who's been, uh, transcended i would say from five figures six figures and onward they've always said an integral part um uh, integral member of their money team is a tax professional and felosha day is that i've had clients that have gone to her who have loved her and i'm just appreciative to have her come into our community to be of service to our members and just to provide dope information to help us get to that next level in regards to our taxes because this is super important if you've ever gotten um audited like i have then you already know you need to tax the rest of your mm -hmm. <laughs> So I will let you get started. I know I started you off. I'll get the questions up that we had submitted. And I'll also um, get the ones that were in credit makes sense as well, because it looks like we're live and crack a on that as well. So this is good. We're finally on. So and those of you who are on the Zoom with us, you can just use that Q&A at the bottom to go ahead and get started. But if you want to let, you know, the credit makes sense to be a little bit about you so we can get going, definitely feel free to do so. By the way, her camera cannot come on. So we're going to see her beautiful picture here with us tonight. Okay. So I want to say so much. Thank you so much, from Tiva, for, again, this opportunity to come and speak with your group. And ladies, I appreciate you guys taking out your time tonight to really learn a little bit about taxes and how to take the tax advice that I give you guys and hopefully implement and execute to help save your business some money and grow as well. So I'm Falasha Day, as Nativa said. I'm an enrolled agent, almost CPA, um, owner of a big count accounting firm located here in Lago, Maryland, and I service clients from zero to multiple, multiple seven, almost eight figure clients. And I do that by incorporating my tax strategies, bookkeeping, and my just overall business strategy into helping their businesses grow. So once again, Nativa, thank you for the opportunity. Awesome, awesome, awesome. People are trying to find you, so I'm <laughs> typing in there now for us to go to the group. So um, as I mentioned before, the number one thing that people have been asking me is to kind of summarize some of the changes that are going on because a lot of people have not filed their taxes as of yet and they don't want to get penalized. So they're wondering if they should file for an extension. Are they granted the extension automatically? And a lot of people are like, I'm not leaving my house to go see my accountant and bring anything. So for these uh, individuals, our prosperity partners, what advice would you provide for them? Okay, well, first things first, every one of us are extended until July 15 to file and pay our taxes, okay? And so what does that mean? So that means you didn't have to put an extension in April 15th to get your taxes extended up until July 15th. However, that doesn't grant you the ability to, pay, to file your taxes after July 15th. 
without any penalty. Okay. What? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, you know, normally when you put your extension and you get from April all the way up, up until October, right? right? Due to the COVID, right? They put an automatic extension in there until July 15th, but that doesn't grant you up until October to file the return. Okay. All right. So if you're still not ready by July 15th, you should be prepping to file another extension. To file no. it. We'll see. That's up in the air. That's up in the uh -huh. air as we speak. You don't even know if they're going to allow us to um, put in extensions on July 15th. So we're going to probably hear an update around that. Let's say like the second or third week of May, once they get all the funding out of the way and then they can go back to regulations. So right now they're just trying to get funding out to everybody. And then they'll, they kind of slightly halted regulations right now and will shift back when it get closer to all of the due dates around like the second week of May. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, another one, this is from Sandra. If you owe back taxes, can tax authorities confiscate your paycheck or bank account without a judgment? Okay. So with IRS, they necessarily don't need a judgment. OK, the IRS needs to send you formal documentation. So the first step will be, hey, you owe, okay, well, let's say if you haven't filed your taxes and you're not completely caught up. So they'll say, hey, all right, so we assume you owe X, Y, Z, however you haven't filed your tax return. Oh, no, that happened the last time. That's that I'm sorry, when I'm looking for questions, it gives me mm. feedback. So I apologize. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. I thought I was hearing it on my phone. I'm like, okay, my list. Okay. So um, what they will end up doing is sending you a few notices and it will specify whether or not the amount that you owe and also what tax filings need to be filed. So if you have not filed all of your tax returns, depending on how delayed you are, the IRS will then go in and process those tax returns on their own and send you an estimate of what they perceive that you owe. Now, mm -hmm. the estimate doesn't include any expenses, any, any taxes, credits, deductions, or anything, okay? So once you get that, they're going to say, hey, you owe this amount. However, we still want you to file X, Y, Z, okay? So if you have to file tax returns, that's when the situation gets complicated. That's when you have the longest amount of time to avoid compensation of your assets because they have to now go and put a judgment out and process the paperwork through the tax courts, okay? So they will end up sending you notice saying you owe this amount. If you don't respond, if you don't file the returns, they'll give you a 30-day window at that point if you don't respond within that 30 day window, they're gonna send you another notice that say this is intent to final notice, this is an intent to levy your bank account. You have 30 days after that. Um, and then it's gonna say, um, if you don't submit a response or set up some type of arrangements within 30 days, you will have to appeal this decision in the tax court. That's the long process, okay? And honestly, you don't want to go with any, any process. The second process is that if you have filed and they send out a judgment, it's faster. So that means that they can go and levy on your bank accounts in, in 90 days time, honestly. Yes. So they'll, send you, yes, so they'll send you the notice, right? And then they'll give you 30 days to agree or disagree. If you agree or disagree, um, you will respond. If you don't respond, they'll send you another notice saying, hey, you have until X, Y, Z um, before we go and submit judgment. So at that point, they're going to send you another final one. But because you've already agreed to the terms of the amount that you owe because you filed the returns, right? The next step is um, start to levy your bank account. The IRS doesn't need a judgment for that. All they have to do now is start to do investigative approaches to find out where you housing your assets. So they would then contact your job and you know start doing background research on your bank accounts and stuff like that. Contacting your previous employer for your um, bank account information, all sorts of things. But they have to send you a notice and they do within three, six, 90 and 120 days. 
right? I remember having to study that uh, when we were going for my certification in credit counseling, how they were going through the different processes. Yeah. And you can contact them at any point. Uh, but at that time, they even recommended they being um, the agencies or uh, certified credit counselors. And they were saying that you should still send clients to a tax professionals because even though um, the agency or the representative that you speak with when you call in will know the different uh, payment plans, they may not offer the best one that's available for the client while on the phone with them. So yeah, it always stuck out, stood out to me because a lot of the reps are inside of our Facebook group and they were like, you know, just call us, we'll tell you exactly why. And then I have my uh, personal clients, my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, mm -hmm. and they're like, no, <laughs> they did not tell me. And I'll end up having to refer them out. And that's how they got on the proper payment plan or the offer and compromise. I had a ton who were denied the offer and compromise who actually did qualify. So that's good stuff. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, they, they, they were saying, oh, you weren't denied. And I think if you try to use that little tool online, sometimes that'll say you're not qualified too. And I don't know what you guys are doing over in the tax area to make them qualify and have it legit so that it's not crazy or flagged. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just representation, Nativa. It's okay. just representation. They know once you have a professional step in, the ball game has changed. We know the mm -hmm. regs, we know the laws. And so they won't be able to swift through the process so easily. And so that's that's why they recommend you have a tax professional step in because the agent's approach is totally different. Mm. Okay, good stuff. All right, let me get to Lisa. She said, I'm um, looking at my paycheck stub and it says due to the change in 2020 tax law, you may want to update your W-4 for 2020. What does this mean? And will I be paying more in taxes this year and have a smaller refund? Okay, so is that person inside of the group listening to us right now? Because I need to ask them just two more additional questions. Lisa, and the reason being, yeah. Are you here? I don't know if Lisa is here. Let me see if I see her name. Okay, um, so what will safe. happen just in a general basis, um, that individual needs to go back and if they haven't filed their 2019 tax return, they need to file that 2019 tax return as quickly as possible so they can see what credits and deductions that they're no longer applicable for. So for example, if you are in a high state tax area, right, like um, New York, or California, right? Then a portion of your state taxes is no longer itemized deductions. So you, in previous years, were accustomed to taking the full state tax, the state income tax is deducted out of your check, your mortgage property taxes and stuff like that, when all of that stuff is not added up and capped at 10,000. So that will limit, okay, your um, itemized deductions, which will then increase your taxable income. So it's very important that in your particular case, you go back and file 2019 tax returns and see um, one, are you owing? If you are owing, you need to make adjustments now or you're gonna end up owing more in 2020 than you did in 2019. If you aren't owing, you need to evaluate what credits and deductions you're no longer able to take relative to your situation. Okay, good stuff. And Jack Wells wants to know why did the W-4 change anyway? <laughs> Well, the W-4 changed because we're no longer able to take personal exemptions. So, okay, so due to the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, prior to that, if you guys were to take your tax return out, we were allotted multiple credits. So we were allowed the option between itemized deductions and standard deductions. And we also received a personal exemption of 4000 at that point, $4,150 per individual that you claim in your tax return. So that will be 4,000 for you, your spouse and your children each. And so when they went, when they let go of that expense, I mean, that exemption, they made the adjustment on the tax return to, on the W-4 form to reflect that. Okay, good stuff. And how can I adjust my allowances so that I see more money in my paycheck throughout the year? Is there a way to do this without actually owing? And what exactly are allowances? Mm. Okay. Good question. Good question. Okay. So your allowances is the amount of money um, that is applied per allowance. So um, I don't know if I can share my screen. 
just give me one second let's have what i mean to say okay. so i can show you guys something let me see because i had a client ask me this he was like Velocide, I no one has ever been able to explain to me why are we paying so much money in taxes. Every tax professional that I've ever went to has never been able to explain it. So just give me guys one second. Okay, got it. One second, let me find it. Okay. So allowances, and I'm about to share my screen. Share my screen. Okay, yes, I can. Perfect. Okay. Oh, so I'm not you share screen. Yes, because you know, now with Zoom, you, they made so many changes. You don't know what you can and cannot do now. Okay. Oh, as as you started. oh, great. Okay, cool. Perfect. Okay, so I am about to break this down. So most people don't understand. Um, so allowance is the amount that will that's not really taxed you get the take out a certain amount that's not taxed so for example let's say if you make fifty thousand dollars here okay so but you are single okay so automatically you will go to the withholding chart and say okay you know why am i paying so much taxes how much taxes should i be paying okay so you'll go to the withholding table and you will find where your income falls so right now, if any of you make between $50,000, your income fall between this $43,000 and the $89,000, okay? So automatically, any income that exceeds, all right, the $43,000, right, will be now taxed at the 22% in addition to the $4,617 that's due. So automatically, your allowances is that, that number that says how much you're going to be taxed. How many uh, people, family members are you uh, taking up account for? And so they, that's the amount that they don't really touch. So if you ever want to know how come you're paying a certain amount of money, you go to the withholding table here and I'll put the link in the chat, and you just find your wage, and even based on your pay period, which you're supposed to be um, taken out as well, okay? So here's the allowances. If you were paid on a uh, bi-weekly basis, and you are single, okay? And you say you're claiming three allowances, three people, you, your husband, and your child, right? So the wage amount that you got paid bi-weekly is not at least 3200 32.2, but not more than 32.6 at four allowances. This is the amount that they should withhold. So based on the amount of allowances you take is the amount that they withhold. If the higher the amount, the less amount that they withhold. So this is why most people say claim that zero because you end up paying the most taxes. So I remember one of the questions were like, okay, I'm still owing, but I'm claiming zero. The reason being is because the chart has a cap. Let me show you. The chart has a cap. Here we go. Once your income go over this threshold, the system is confused. So what you guys have to do is have your tax professional assess how much of a difference you're owing, and then you would do that as an additional deduction, an additional withdrawal on your W-4 form. It's interesting that all of this is on the IRS. I, I mean, it is just so much on the IRS website. <laughs> it's too much, it's too much. Yes. To be, to be really honest with you, even as a professional myself, it's a, it's a with this chaos that we're dealing with now, it's a lot now. 
Um, they've already made so many changes to the net operating losses. I have my paperwork here. I'm reading all of the regulations now for that. It's just so many changes happening. This but it's driving me crazy over here. Um, so I'm about to pull up the W-4 form so you guys can see where you will do the additional. Um, here you go. You see that? Mm -hmm. For the 2020 um, W-4 form. Okay, so people in the group said it's a little blurry, so I'm going to tell them I'll post the link Yep, in a little bit. You will, yep, so you will put that additional amount. So you will first file, you should have filed 2019 already. If you're owing, take that additional amount and divide it by um, your pay, your, the, the way that you get paid. So if you're bi-weekly, you would divide it by 26. If you're weekly, 52. If you're monthly, 12. And that will give you the additional amount that you need to have withheld. And this explains why I always, oh, I mean, it is interesting to see all of this posted like right there. And if you're asking a question, you really don't know where to look on this website. <laughs> like looking for anything is bananas on their website, but it is really all there, which is crazy. Yeah, and honestly, the tip, even tax professionals don't even know how. Like, you should see us in our groups. They be cursing each other out. Like, and if you don't know how to research the IRS site, you don't need to be a tax professional, girl. It's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> all right so lisa says this explains what well, always end up going so that was good stuff walking through there so yeah i will definitely um post the link as she gives them to us and actually when i upload it to the working homeschooler.com which is where all of our replays are going for right now um i will actually upload the doc because it's actually a pdf that you can download so i'll post the link and then i'll upload the doc as well along with uh felicia uh, information yep. all right so the question is, if you owe back taxes, is this a good time to apply for a fresh start or any other assistance or should I wait till June when everything dies down? Okay, so where are you in terms of it? Are you, do you have a payment plan set up already? Have you already been in communications with the IRS? If you haven't, um, this would, would and wouldn't be a good time. One. The reason why I wouldn't be is because they're overloaded and they're backed up. Um, they don't really have the manpower and some um, locations and divisions of the IRS is no longer even open. Okay. So you won't, you won't be able to get the attention to detail that you need. However, that might be a good thing as well that they may overlook some things and approve you so i would just say just go with your gut instinct at this time what does the spirit tell you because that tells you it if you know you need some financial assistance or to get the tax debt burden reduced or some sort of fashion just submit it now because they may take um this situation that we're in as a particular hardship as well okay good stuff all right, Angela says, I live in Kansas City, Missouri. In 2017, I filed an extension on my federal taxes and then filed by the debt line in October. My balance was $2, to which I paid. The IRS came back and said I owed $1,039, so $1,039. Why would that happen? Okay, say that one more time. She said she owned, when did she file the return? Was it October 15th? She said she filed by the deadline and she, uh, when she did it, it said she owed $2 and the IRS came back saying that she owed $1,039. Okay. So do you know for sure the extension was accepted because you can, trans that. you can transmit an extension, but it doesn't get accepted. That doesn't, that doesn't mean it got, it, it was accepted. So part of that, but that's still quite high. Uh, for late filing um, penalty, okay? Then they have the 20, up to 25% off to, no, you shouldn't have owed um, that much. Was oh, there any Angela. type of- Good. So Angela, if you want to talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, was there let any type- mm -hmm. Sorry. So Angela, let me know if you want to bring, get your audio on, let me find you. When it's like over a certain amount, Zoom makes it really funny. All right, I put an allow to talk, so she may have additional questions for you. So just kind of explain. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can. Uh, yes, I, um, oh, I forgot the question just that quick. <laughs> 
Oh, she was saying, was the um, extension accepted? Oh, it was accepted. I had my email confirmation that it was accepted. Gotcha. And I paid the, uh, I put the $2 money order in there and they came back like four okay. or five months later, maybe even six months, wanted me to submit my returns again because they had received the $2 money order, but they didn't have my tax return. I was like, well, that's odd because I submitted both at the same time. So I had to send them another copy of my returns and then like a month later they send me this bill of a thousand thirty nine dollars and some change okay so did you mail in your tax return i did i didn't send them by certified mail though i don't i don't think i did that did you get a tracking number i don't recall that i did okay so let me just tell you one trick there is a first time abatement that everyone qualifies for okay so mm -hmm. if you know you cannot pay the 1900 go ahead and do the first time abatement and get it wiped out okay they'll get they'll grant you that one you just have to make sure that it's done timely so let me ask you just a few more questions when you mailed off the tax return and the extension i mean the tax return and the um payment right did yes. you mail it on the 15th and did they post market for the 15th I can't hear you. It's going down. 15. I couldn't hear you. It was mailed on the 15th. Okay. So you e-filed it or you mailed it? Well, I e-filed it, but I sent in the $2 Amen. after I e-filed it. So it. I e-filed it by the 15th. Got it. Okay. And so then it was like late in the evening. So the very next day I printed off a copy of the return and got a $2 money order and mailed all that in, but it was e-filed on the 15th. Okay. I think you caused yourself maybe this problem. Let me explain. So just so we're on the same page, I'm going to ask you just for clarity purposes. So you e-filed the return on the 15th, and then on the 16th, you printed out the tax return again and then mailed the $2 payment. Yes. Okay. So when you did that, that could have been a superseding tax return. Oh. So okay. that means that you're telling the IRS, hey, 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 hey. Stop that, stop that one that you just processed. Here's the correct one before you process it. And so oh. with that one, they time stamp that tax return, which was behind the due date. Payment was late. Uh, so I should have just mailed in the $2 yes, payment with the without anything. Exactly. But she can still okay. see a statement now, right? Yes, she can. I will also say, don't do the abatement first. Go ahead on and respond with the confirmation of the e-file um, acceptance or submission and attach that, and then also a copy of the payment. Okay. Because then that will then get I filed my taxes for um, 2019 and I had uh, my return was like $801 and they took it for 2020 what, for tw what about 2018 2018 I was under still under chapter 13 bankruptcy so they actually um, my student loan people took that it was like 200 something dollars okay. so you were going to get a refund this year the, the yes I was going to get a refund this year and for last year for 2018 and 2019. And they took refund for 2018 and 19? Yeah, 2018 went to my student loan, 2019, okay. the IRS just took. I filed it okay. like three weeks ago and they accepted it pretty quickly. And I went back and checked, they said they took the money. I can't find yeah. out um, if they exactly um, put that towards 20, um, 17, because I know they're backlogged, so I didn't want to call to bother them with that right now. But on I don't know. Notice it should say it. it on your notice, it should say what debt it was applied to, what time. Okay, well, I haven't gotten that in the mail yet. Okay. 
Once you get that in the mail, it should tell you what tax you. But I think what's happening, so if I were you, I will attempt to try to get it reduced with the paperwork showing you submitted it on time. And then if not, do the first time abatement. First time abatement. Okay, so do I call call them about that or can I get that information on the RS uh, website? What, the abatement? Yes. Okay, so you have to go to your notice that they sent you regarding uh, what you're owing. Okay. And that will be how you respond because you need to send the paperwork to that address as well because that's the department, that's the division that's handling your account. Oh, okay. All right. That helps stuff. a lot. Thanks, Thank Angela. you. Look, these last two uh, live lessons have been for you, huh? You got the student <laughs> loans and the taxes taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good stuff. Let me go down to the next question. This is from Ms. Luster. Is it true that if you owe taxes, they are forgiving them because of the CARE Act? And is forgiveness permanent or temporary? Mm -mm, they're not forgiving any taxes. They're just extending you the pay the tax until July 15th. No one, honestly, even with their programs for the businesses, like their employer retention program, that is not even a um, forgiveness. That is just an extension of payment. Mm -hmm. So what's happening, they're saying, hey, your taxes would have been due April 15th. We're giving you two months to pay it by July 15th. If you don't pay it all by July 15th, we want to begin accruing interest and penalties after, well, on or at, on and after um, July 16th. So all they're doing is just giving you that two month window to file and pay and to avoid interest and penalty charges. Mm. All right. So Sean, if you have any questions on it, definitely let me know. We have Deanna. If you want to come on Deanna, uh, type and let me know. But she said that, um, do you recommend hiring a tax debt relief company? What are the pros and cons? I legit have no means of covering back payments and don't understand the offer and compromise. Just lost my job due to COVID. I received second intent to levy notice, if not third recently. I didn't know they were um, sending out notices still. Yeah, because um, it's because it's automated. So it's hard to stop what was already being sent out. Um, right, yes. I'm on. Hold on. I have to find I'm telling you. No Zoom problem. does not make it that easy to scroll through the names. So uh, <laughs> give me one moment. I'm going to allow you to talk. So, you know, we can answer the questions. Can you talk, Deanna? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, hear you good. Okay, hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm very frustrated, but I hope I could get some help from you here with a number of questions I have actually besides that one. I don't know if you all can see me because I'm just looking at a silhouette i can see yeah. your name but that's fine i mean long as okay. we have your questions i know you said that you you know uh your job well you're one of the many whose job uh, was lost due to COVID, and you got your second or third intent and you're kind of wondering if you, you should hire a debt relief company to try to find out and just get a deeper understanding of offer and compromise right um yes because i've had two ira agents who I consulted with who told me the last thing I want to do is hire a tax relief agent because it's just going to be a rip off. Anything they can do, I can do myself. Um, well, they say that with credit, but we all know like some <laughs> people can do good, but some people be like, listen, no. <laughs> well, I, well, I started to do that, go with the tax relief company and then I chickened out when I started looking at all of the reviews for the ones that I looked up. I did not find one that my gut felt comfortable enough with because I read too many reviews where people said they paid a fortune, which is what they cost, and they did not get any help or anywhere near enough help, and they still had to pay all this money to the IRS on top of the fortune they had to pay them in thousands of dollars. Um, I don't even remember the exact figures now, but I know I was quoted things like a minimum of, oh, I don't even remember, but it, it was basically two, at least two to $5,000 just almost to start the investigation. I mean, 
not even counting how much by the end it it would end up costing or maybe that was by the end because I don't really remember it clearly now and I should have had everything in writing before this because I sure have enough tech questions um <laughs> but anyway it it just I I went and even took money out of my Roth IRAs I took out the principal from all of them except a couple of them or a few of them that did not even keep records. And that was that turned into a whole nother nightmare because I never hired a professional to help me with my investments. I did all of my, until, until later when I got the 403B, but I did all of my Roth IRA investments by myself for many years before I got the 403Bs. And I'm just, I just assumed that they would always have my records but a few of them did not keep records. And so I don't even know, I would have to go back and find, look through all of my old tax returns, if I can even find them to figure out what amount was the principal that I contributed to them. Cause that's the only thing I know I could take out at least before COVID-19 penalty free. Um, anyway, I don't want to give you too many questions before you start answering. Okay, then so I'll probably me, confuse you. Well, so, so let me go ahead and start if you feel comfortable. Um, do you feel comfortable with telling me how much debt it is? Just so I can give you a, a um, actual yeah. answer. Or you can well, type it to me privately and then I can say it. But I won't say it and I can just give you a scenario around that as well. That's an option if you don't feel comfortable. Um, the reason being is because if it's $3,000, I'll say no. If it's $5,000, I would say no. Now, if you're owing 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 and up, I would definitely say yes. Okay. The amount I owe is somewhere between like uh oh God, I'm so mad at myself right now because I had all this stuff written down and now and I don't and I don't know where it is right this second. But um now remind you i owe to the state and the irs mm -hmm. so i i i very foolishly was paying off more of the money that i took out from the principal of my roth um iras to the state versus the irs and um the rest of it i did what i said i would absolutely not do which is put it towards bills and it hasn't made a dent in my freaking credit card debt but um it was somewhere between six i would say minimum bare minimum six to 10 or 15 at the absolute most but considering how much i've paid off i have paid thousands so already to the irs and the state so I don't know. I'm thinking maybe it's between six to eight thousand left. I'm really not sure. Okay. Let so, me. I'm looking at my notes as I'm talking to you and okay. my notepad, and hopefully it's in here somewhere. Okay. So yes and no. So let's go ahead on and break down what a debt tax debt relief company. They may be enroll agents or tax attorneys, and they have massive overhead. So you can go and work with an enrolled agent or a CPA that specializes in representation or tax resolution, um, tax resolution in this particular case. Um, and that's the, the same term as in our world as tax debt relief. The only difference is the big wigs realize that that's the most attractive verbiage to use with marketing. So if you mm -hmm. cannot afford the bigger companies, check out a um, enrolled agent and see what their expertise or CPA or see what their expertise in with tax resolution. Um, that's or, one because if you're only about... Huh? I was going to Go say, or a, a tax lawyer, right? Right. Okay. So that's the most attractive work. Uh, is it my feedback again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. So it could be an enroll agent, tax attorney, or CPA up for the IRS. However, if it goes beyond appeals, then you will have to have a tax attorney go to tax court with you at that point. Um, but I would say hire a, a, a tax resolution specialist simply because you have both the federal and state. And if we're only 8,000 to 15,000 on the federal level, then more than likely you owe between six and eight on the state level. So it ends up uh, being beneficial for you to do so. Um, you just have to see if it's cost effective. And then also like, for example, I charge no less than 1500 to get started and then 10% of your savings. So if I save you a hundred thousand, you will have to pay me 10% of that. So that's, that's normal, but the bigger companies charge 35%. So just pay attention to that additional clause, but it's worth it because they will get the tax debt released, um, re um, reduced or really negotiate on your behalf. And they make more money from you when they negotiate. So you want them to have that percentage in there so they can go and get the money so they can save you money and make their money. Are you an enrolled agent or mm -hmm. one? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're an enrolled agent? Okay. Yes. Okay. What company are you with? Um, I work for, enrolled agents are independent. We're independent um, representatives. And you can find her information inside the health center. Okay. Down where we have our wealth partners. So all of her information, her company information, all that stuff. So if you want to yeah. investigate, use your investigative okay. skills. That's what you use. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in your I know you use them, Deanna. You can go yeah. ahead. <laughs> in her case, because after I read her message here, she said she have received the second one. I would say get representation as soon as possible so they can stop the process. So they can slow it down. And that at least give you some time to regroup and then make some adjustments. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, can I ask one more question? Hello? Hello, should okay. you okay with that? Uh-huh, I'm fine. Okay. All right. I, I need to know if I should dissolve uh, my LLC. I, I started it in 2015. I paid thousands of dollars each I mean, all together for having it each year because I have to pay all these fees each year to keep it going. And I haven't made one cent in profit. I haven't, I barely even started two other than that year that I first formed it. I was really working hard to get um, tenants because it was formed as a passive real estate investing company. And I put my house that I inherited down south into it. Um, and it's in, it's in the LLC's name instead of my name. And I was trying to get tenants. It ended up not working. Just had horrible, horrible experiences with tentative tenants, three of them that first year. And then I just got so discouraged. Um, I, I totally left it alone until just when I took out the loan, finally, to get it fixed up because it needed massive repairs. I took out the loan for the amount that the repairs were estimated by a realtor to cost. And then a week before the money came to me, the house was basically destroyed by Hurricane Florence in 2000, September, 2018. Okay. So I've had three different people, contractors say that they've looked at it. They say it needs to just be torn down. Um, and I should just basically sell the land and what's left of the house for like $35,000. It, it was valued at on Zillow for like 100,000 um, at the time. But then again, one real estate agent that went inside before the hurricane said it was only worth about 40, 45,000 in her estimate. Um, Cause like I said, it needed repairs already. So, so you wanna know if you same, could dissolve the- <laughs> corporation my llc which owns my house now in north carolina i the house i live in is in new jersey which i also own this house is house is worth far more i just saw on zillow recently an estimate of this house that's like very high compared to what i paid for it i paid like 165 and it's worth about three something I have it written mm -hmm. 
but that's Zillow. And I know Zillow's not totally reliable. And then I saw two other sites that said it was worth a lot less, even less than what I paid on a couple of them. So I w- I'm thinking if, if, if I get my house together here enough and I sell it, then I would have money to just tear down the other house and put something else there in North Carolina, which actually means more to me than this house in Jersey I live in. But at the same time, I don't have any money to keep paying these fees that I owe and for the registered agent and everything. I have to pay North Carolina for the registered agent and the taxes and the everything where the house is. I have to pay Nevada, which is where what they've been they helped me form the LLC and I have consultations with them whenever I need them throughout the year. But I'm not, I haven't made any money. And at this rate, I'm not sure when I will. I keep trying to be optimistic and saying, I'm going to get it together and get my, get some money flowing. But I'm so far beyond that in my mindset. I have so much stuff I have to get to get together before I know I'm going to do it even though I want that to be this year, like I say, every year. Well, I remember you had your, your, your life coaching coaching. So just to put the goal before full out today comes on, like you, you have a lot of goals. So I will follow some of her suggestions and kind of get really clear on which ones you want to tackle first. You mentioned income was definitely uh, the main thing to focus on now being that COVID-19 has kind of struck and affected your income. So that's definitely going to affect the house, fixing mm-hmm. it up, selling it, going to North Carolina. So that's kind of a process there. And I'll let Falasha they kind of tackle the um, LLC. Okay. Okay. So the problem with the LLC, if you don't dissolve it, is that if you are doing, okay, so let me break this down. Are you LLC single member or LLC S Corp or partnership? Just single member. Okay. And are you transacting anything, meaning collecting money or nope. moving money through it, expenses or anything? The only expenses I have is all the fees to keep the LLC going, plus the property taxes um, that I pay every year. Okay. All righty. Um, so for all of our real estate people, because I know a lot of people say have the LLC right? And Mm -hmm. so they say that specifically for liability purposes. So I had a client that didn't Mm -hmm. have the LLC set up for a rental property. She ended up getting sued. Um, But luckily enough, she had enough um, insurance coverage, which protected her. So there's a catch 22 behind this LLC stuff when it comes down to real estate. The judge is the one that had the final decision on whether or not you are liable. Not the LLC corporate veil. No. Number one. Number two, the, the, the longer you keep that LLC open, it's going to require for you to maintain it. Okay. So that means the tax filings are going to have to be filed and everything else. So the quicker that you make the decision that you're no longer um, interested in having the property under a LLC and you're no longer interested in kind of doing a property, then I would say dissolve it. But what I would end up doing is getting a higher amount of insurance coverage on the property to cover any losses that would have been um thought of being protected through the llc because oh, some there's... People use mm-hmm. i'm sorry go ahead yep because some people use the llc as a way to, to avoid um that that insurance well this is the problem both things you said i'm glad you said them i have a that last tentative tenant has threatened to sue me since 2015 i mean not like i, I keep hearing from her but um, that's one thing I'm afraid of. If I dissolve the LLC, she will sue me because I I put her out right after she had started to, to um, we had signed the contract or whatever she had paid or whatever. And I put her back. I reimbursed her money right away. But because she had put some money into fixing it at her expense, which was part of our agreement from the start, Um, But she just kept seeing me so shady. I ended up just backing out of the whole deal. So she threatened to sue me um, after doing all the shady stuff anyway herself. But I had also canceled my insurance on the house of all things that same year 
because it was so expensive. It was more expensive than, or almost as expensive as the house up here. And they said it would only be less if I finally got a tenant in there. Because I guess I'm too honest for my own good. I gave them too much information about how long it had been lived in, how long it had been since then, and blah, blah, blah. So they were charging me an absolute fortune. So I had no money from insurance for fixing it up after the hurricane destroyed it. And if I get sued. Do you think she's going to sue you like five years down the line? Maybe if she, I don't know if she's checking to see if I've dissolved it or not. I have no idea. I mean, but I would definitely not put it past her mm -hmm. at this point. But I'm also, but I also have candy. someone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm uh -huh. just saying, if she did any improvements before the hurricane happened, she can't really. I mean, she can't prove it really. I mean, so much time has passed. Um, so I wouldn't let yeah. that be your sole determining factor. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Um, do you owe her any money from the repairs? When you receive yeah, insurance, like, the insurance? Supposedly, I supposedly I did. No, when I, you said when I received insurance? Yeah, if you received the insurance funds and she did um, improvements to the place, did they compensate? What do you mean I received insurance funds? I, I had to pay insurance for the homeowner's insurance. Oh, she didn't have insurance. You didn't have insurance when Hurricane Irma happened, right? No, when the hurricane came by then, I had canceled it. And before that, I was just making payments. I never got any insurance money. Okay. So I have the insurance money. Okay, so this is going to answer the question for you. Is the property in your name or in the business name? It's in the LLC's name now. I transferred it from my name. Okay, well, you're going to have to keep it open for a couple of years and just and if you think she's going to sue you then. Because if the property was in your name, she can still go after you. That's why I asked that, regardless. So you could dissolve it at that point because she still can go after you civi civilly. She could still right. do that too because you were operating in the capacity as the owner. Mm -hmm. So instead of running, I'll just honestly just have my team shoot her an email or call and say, hey, I'm just checking in. Things are cleared and just to see where her head is too. And then that'll kind of give you an idea of what direction you need to go into in terms of legal aspect. I would shoot her an email saying what? No, just checking in saying, hey, you know, this is Deanna. I'm just checking in. It's been a few years. Just want to check in with you just to see where her head is. Have you heard from her since 2015? Um, no, I reached out to her actually, um, once the next year or twice in the next year after we had the big fallout and I was actually trying to offer a compromise to her. Well, I'm maybe not a compromise in her mind, obviously, but I was, I told her about actually your group credit on fire and the bud and the other ones um the budget the budget nieces groups because she and her fiance's finances were horrible so that was the other reason i had backed out when i learned how horrible their credit was how much they had lied to me about so many different things and you know it wasn't worth it to me even if she was gonna put these claiming to make the repairs at her their expense you know, it, he had a criminal, see, it was, it was crazy. So, but anyway, she, she wasn't trying to hear anything about me trying to help her. All she looked at it as is another opportunity to threaten me. I'm going to sue you. And what are you calling me for? And da, 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 da. Don't worry about my finances. I'm just going to sue you. Okay. So, so I'm sorry to interrupt you. I honestly think you may need to contact attorney to see if there's some statutory statutory limitations on the claim on the claim and what is her grounds. And then that will give you the clarity and, and tell them exactly everything that you told us here tonight. And then mm -hmm. they will be able to kind of assess whether or not she do have grounds. And then at that point, you can take it from there. That's what I would end up telling my clients, honestly, in that particular. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll ask any more questions after this. I'll contact you after. Okay, thank you. All right, let's get to some business questions before you write up out of here. Uh, Tracy <laughs> said, I operate out of my estate and trust, and this is my first year having to file taxes, trying to find someone who is knowledgeable in this area. 
Okay, so I need that person actually here as answering questions simply because how is the business structured on the state level? Because even if you have the business in the state, how is it? Is it an S Corp? Is it a partnership? Is it a LLC? Is it sole proprietorship? All of those things matter. Um, that's one thing. Um, also, the estate doesn't really come into play until you're about to transfer the assets when you're deceased. Mm -hmm. So your estate is you're building all of the assets and all of the money and all of the wealth that will then be transferred once you die into your estate. So right now, there may not even be any tax ramifications behind it because technically the estate doesn't own it until you die. And then it transfer over the assets. So it goes to pre probate. They evaluate the assets, the debt, the liability, pay that off. Then whatever or whatever you have, the requirements or if it's to remain open, um, they'll settle whatever debt um, from your um, life insurance proceeds or whatever in the state to continue the business going at that point. But there may not even be any involvement with the state as well at this point because you haven't died yet. All right, Monica said, I had two exposures at work. I stayed at a hotel and quarantined myself. Can I write any of these expenses off? Okay, so what we are trying to do, and look out for my petition to Nativa. If you see it, please share it with the ladies because this will benefit all of us. So I am putting a petition in for them to reinstate Form 2106 where we are all able to deduct our business use of home on our taxes. Because right now, we're, you know, well, I don't have a nine to five, but, you know, most of the individuals that work for their companies, they're using their electricity, their everything, and they're not being compensated for that. However, the company is still deducting the full amount that they pay them, but you're paying higher expenses on your part. So I put in a petition and I'm hoping thousands and thousands of people sign it so we can get Congress to think about it, but I'm trying to get that extended. However, um, if you have a notice from your doctor, this can be considered medical expenses. However, it may not exceed the AGI threshold that's required to even be a deduction. Good to know. All right, Jasmine says, if you have a business, did you file your taxes, your business and personal taxes together or apart and why? Mm, so I love your answer for this, so I made sure yes. I asked this question. <laughs> yes. So look, it depends Nativa, on exactly how your business is structured. So if your business is a single member LLC, then you will file your business tax return simultaneously with your personal return. On Schedule C, the business will be filed and that will be sta stapled together to your 1040, right? One tax return. If your business is a partnership, Sorry, guys, the kids are now coming down probably from their bath and stuff. Um, so if you're a partnership, you will have to file your 1065 first and then get the K-1 that will roll over to your personal tax return. If you have a uh, S Corp, you will file the 1120S and you will receive a K-1 that will be used to file your personal tax return. And if you are a corporation, you have to file the 1120 you have to file the 1120 and then your personal tax return. So the only one that is simultaneously, if you are a single member LLC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lisa says I started a business in January of 2019. However, I did not register it last year. Can I register it now and backdate it so I can file my taxes with the LLC? Or will I just have to file the 1099 mis uh, miscellaneous that I received? I've been hearing conflicting stories. Okay, so you cannot backdate a uh, when you register the business, okay? So remember, registration starts on the state level first. You register with your state first, and then IRS say, okay, well, your LLC with your state, your LLC with us, unless you file differently. However, every one of us, regardless of an LLC, S-Corp partnership, we are all sole proprietors. So you still are legally responsible and required to file all of your income and all of the expenses as a sole proprietor for 2019 and then 2020 you will file as um, the same way, but you will just have the LLC with the business name on the Schedule C. 
So the only difference is when you file 2020, you'll be able to have the business name and the tax ID number. But in 2019, that line will be blank because um, you don't have the business name. Mm -hmm. All right, Anita says, actually, let me get one more business one. Given COVID-19, there are a lot of questions around entity structure for tax purposes specifically. Can you discuss the best structure for entrepreneurs? You know what? Adrian, since you're in credit on fire, Falasha Day broke this down and uh, Boss is on fire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I would love for you to go to Bosses on Fire. That's your entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurship class <laughs> uh, lesson that's inside uh, of the academy. And it's literally broken down. We have the attachments from the IRS, given descriptions and everything. So that really, really breaks it down. And April says, which would be more helpful for me to have a tax attorney or a CPA in regards to tax deductions and getting the most write-offs? Hmm. So see, this is where it gets tricky. This is, a, I'm just a smiling over here in the table. Okay. So this is where it gets exciting simply because a tax attorney, if they're not a, an accountant, then how will they be able to connect the dots be, between your books and your taxes. So I've seen that when your accountant or your tax attorney is not well versed in accounting per se, deductions are overlooked, certain things that probably were on your uh, profit and loss, they didn't deduct or they question, certain expenses may not. So I would look at a person that's well uh, vast in both taxes and accounting, especially as a business owner, because you need to connect the dots because there's certain things you need to do in the business to get the tax benefit from. So if that a tax attorney don't know how it's supposed to be laid out on your P&L or how your bookkeeper did it or how you did it, they may not interpret it correctly and place it properly for your taxes. So for example, um, a lot of my government contractor clients, they to to comply with what they call a G car or GAR, they have that little GACA JACA something pro protocol for government regulations. We have to have non deductible expenses in a whole totally different category. And if your tax attorney don't understand that, then they're not going to claim the right meals and deduction amount. They're not going to claim the right business use of home because for government uh, accounting, we have to have it under uh, unallowable, you see? And if they don't know that that's allowable for tax purposes, but not allowable for financial purposes, that's where the problem and the miscommunication will mess you up. So my advice is to have somebody that's well-versed on the financial aspect, which is the accounting, and then also the tax aspect, because the two go hand in hand. Love it. All right, we had a lot of questions about the abatement. Well, just a few. If you received a letter that said the IRS assigned your overdue taxes to a private collection agency, can you still file for your first time abatement? They also no. include a taxpayer abatement flyer. No. No, there's a deadline. When you receive that letter that says if you agree or disagree um, and the your response is due, that's when you have to submit the abatement at that time. OK, now in the phase that you are in, you can still do an offer and compromise. OK, and you can still get on a payment plan. But them completely wiping it out like that, you've already missed that. See, that's another reason why you want to have a tax professional. Well, not just a tax professional, a, a registered, you know, certified one. Because we know those those triggers, those deadlines, those due dates. So it's three, six, nine, twelve. 30, 60, 90, and 120 days are the key days that you need to pay attention to if you owe the IRS. Mm. And are there any specific qualifications for being granted an abatement? Mm. Um, well, the first time one, you still have to have some ground. So I would say lack of knowledge. Um, lack of knowledge is a good ground. Um, but this is where your pro come into place because, okay, so let me use an example. I just had to do an abatement for a few clients. The IRS system crashed when they made adjustments to their payroll system. And a few of our clients received notices. And I didn't use the first time abatement because I didn't want to, because they don't owe. 
that we mail that payment on time. IRS, you're, 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 you're being like Deanna situation. Hold on, something is not right. So I sent in the response. And so at that point, you need to know all of the deadlines. So they'll say, okay, so you paid it late April. They won't send a notice to you until July, but you have 30 days from July. By that 30 days, your abatement letter need to go in. And if you don't, you need to start thinking, what exactly happened in my life that have caused me to lose focus? And whatever it is, if it's life or death, if it's sickness or health, put it in the letter with your abatement. And they may take that as probable cause for you filing incorrectly or filing late. Of it. Or, or, or not being able to afford to pay the balance. And I know one of the main things that negatively impacts a lot of people in both communities, whether it's our, you know, the online school credit on fire or um, the free community credit makes sense is the, is you guys ignore the, uh, the little statements that come in the mail. <laughs> it's like you see it, but you don't know what to do or, you know, they don't really know what to do. It's kind of like, I know I owe, you know, I don't know what I should do. Should I? And it kind of creates panic and it's okay. And this is why I bring professionals in whom I trust. You can say, you know, hey, you know, can I schedule a consultation with you? Or, you know, is this worthy of scheduling consultation? Can I help? You can kind of know who to reach out to and um, get that professional assistance. But Tina said, I was sick for about three years or about three years ago. I was unable to file my taxes. I was a 1099 worker. And now I have a balance since I've gone back to work. And I cannot seem to make a payment plan. Uh, they probably want to agree to one, depending. But anyway, what can I do to get this uh, debt down? Okay, so how much is it? Did she say? Nope. Okay, so, so that, that, depends, that, you know. that depends. So if the debt is above 25000 you have to send a totally different form of paperwork in with the payment plan. Okay, but if the debt is beneath twenty five thousand, right, then you just need to con keep trying a different rep. I've found that that has has worked. But then also go ahead on and just pay a representative, you know, whatever the hourly rate is to get it done, so you can have that headache out of your head. But then also check the IRS online portal. They are trying to alleviate themselves of having to do them. So it might allow it. I remember one of my clients said that to me and I was like, hey, go check online. He was like, hey, hey, hey they allow me to do it. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. So go check on their online portal. They That system may allow you to do it without dealing, even dealing with a representative. Love it. Neva says, I have an IRS debt from 2010, 9,000, one from 2017, 2000. I've made payments to the debt and about 6,000 to the one from 2010. It's not reflecting on my current balance. Is there a way to have the payment applied to the 2017 debt and do an offer and compromise for the 2010 debt because it's so old? How do I work all of this out? Mm, hey, these are some good, good questions. So now my question back to her. Because what notices have you been receiving from IRS regarding a 10-year debt? Because you know, if it's, if it's after 10 years under collectible, they cannot. So when did you start paying on that? And when did you agree to those terms? Was it this year? If you did, you messed up. They was going to have to wipe that out. If you've paid them in, okay, so 10 years, give them 10 years, everybody, 10 years. If you paid them last year, we're, we've already opened up to them extending collections on it. One problem. Number two, they will not apply it to the 2017 balance. You were supposed to know the statutory laws and hold off on that money and apply it to 2017, knowing the laws. So in your particular case, no, we won't be able to get it pulled to this year, um, to the 2017 tax year and see where you are. Um, did they cancel the debt for 2010? Did you, did you receive any notices at all opening it back up as well? Love it. All right, two more questions because I know you said your babies just got out of the bath. <laughs> I'll let you get back to your babies. Thank you so much. So... Mm -hmm. 
if um, I did get this one via email and she kind of knew about the 10 year because we talk about statute of limitations and so I put it on fire a lot. So she mentioned two things. Number one, she filed for bankruptcy and I know that pauses it. And she was wondering how that affected the 10 year and she did chapter seven. And number two, if they take her taxes, does that also extend, um, take her refund? Does that extend the 10 year statute of limitations if she hasn't voluntarily made a payment? Yeah, it does. It does? I was like, I don't know, I'm gonna ask tonight. <laughs> it does, it does because it makes the debt collectible. Ooh, that yeah. sucks. That's the problem. So that's why most people don't go to file until after that 10 years. Hey, how can you go that long without filing though? Girl, they're doing it. They're doing it. Wow. Yeah, so that opens it up and it does extend them. Yes, it does. Oh, Katina says she owes 11000 from twenty. Okay. She okay. said, oh, she did say 11000 mm -hmm. Okay, so that is levy range. So I, you can call and get on a payment plan yourself. If the deaf people are not going to do no negotiations, you can get on a payment plan yourself. I would say, but if you do the payment plan without, a professional then you still stuck with the debt so if you know your goal is to get some of it wiped off go with a professional if and you i will tell you from personal experience when philosophy day is right on the money when i was trying this is when you guys said that you're calling i believe you because i have been the person calling before <laughs> and they're acting like I'm not reading the website saying what options are available <laughs> to me and i ended up having to hire somebody so I mean, I'm gonna leave her information for everyone. So please, she is phenomenal. But I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I just want to let you, I just want to let you know. I know you're not lying. I know you're calling, and I know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> they yes, I had to hire not. somebody. <laughs> yeah, they don't want you to hire. Like even like even some of my clients that hire me after they get audited or whatever, and the rep be like, well, "Why did you?" hire her and I'll come right on in acting real ditzy and blonde and they'll be like oh my gosh here go for and I kill it saving them hundreds and hundreds of dollars <laughs> so yes you want representation because we work for you not the IRS their goal is to get as much money out of you as possible okay and they will use any grounds to do it I've had people even kind of threaten me and my client before I had to call their um manager wow. and yeah, I mean, the girl is tight till this day. So it worked for me and all my clients. So yeah, I would say hire somebody at that point wow. because you're already at the 10 grand. That means as soon as they come back, right, you're going to be one of the ones that start to get the, that final notice and then you're in collections. All right, let me pick one more. I did a lot of the 1099s. Tamika mentioned the Taxpayer Advocate Free Service by Congress. Mm -hmm. So thing. I actually haven't had anybody call them. So if you guys do call and I would love to know your experience. All right. So this is from one of our credit on fire members. I live in a high tax state, New York, Nassau County. My property taxes are $15,000 or low. Is there any way to save on my tax liability? I'm a W-2 earner um, earning approximately one fifty dollars a year, single head of household. Woo -woo! Look, I love when people are single head of household and they're killing it. So yeah, I have to give you a woo -woo, So. <laughs> <laughs> So you said, can you say the first number? You said W two head of household one hundred fifty thousand. She said, or what? She paying what twenty five thousand? She pays fifteen thousand alone just in property taxes. So she's kind of like, what can I do to at least save on the personal tax side? And I feel it. I've, I've lived in a place that had high taxes before. It was horrible. And do she normally owe or? Yeah, give us some more information. I know and you want to be anonymous, so and let how us know. Many children. So while you're doing that, I'll actually get with Anita. She was uh, saying that if you do do a zero exemption, exemption for half the year and then switch over, how do you know kind of what your break even point is just so you make sure you still get money back when tax refunds come out? Right. See, this is what your tax professional guys, and I'm going to be really honest with you. I do not trust general tax advice when it comes down to your tax liability. This is why it's worth having a professional like myself do it because we can tell you exactly like I, so if you guys want to tell me 15 numbers right now, what's your mortgage entrance, what's your property taxes, how much you're withholding, what's your income, I can calculate the amount of money you're going to owe right off the bat and then see, then you tell me how much you paid in taxes and tell you how much you're going to end up owing or getting back a refund. 
right? But when you guys go and use TurboTax, they don't have that knowledge. So you have to work with a professional. That's tax planning. That is that is that one part of that tax planning that everyone can benefit from where you know exactly the minimum and maximum amount you need to pay in taxes every month so you can be in control over what's being taken out of your paychecks. And so working with that professional at least once every other year is worth it because every other year you're in control over your taxes. Love it, love it, love it. Yes, I will post our information so you guys can uh, reach out to her. She is bomb. I always tell her, I was like, listen, when my dad retires, you will be my tax professional. <laughs> <laughs> you will, because she is on it. And when she says she can calculate it, when she did our bosses on fire class, she taught inside of there and she brought out the calculator and was like, hold on, let me calculate this. Listen, you don't know how many tax professionals I know cannot do anything on their calculator because they're so reliant on the systems. Yeah. So I was like, so... <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Okay, there was one more I mentioned. Okay, here you are, Tisha. I'm getting you right now. I haven't filed 2018 personal taxes. Will I be audited if I file my 2019? I got this more than once, so I wanted to make mm. sure. No, 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 no. So now, now this is the thing. No, you won't be audited. But if your return is so inconsistent from 17 and 19, they're going to request 18 quickly. Okay, just to see where the change happened, what what's different with her lifestyle, what's different with her income, what, what's the changes, and at that point, if there's major inconsistencies, that's when the audit will be triggered. But no, not because you skipped a year. The only notice you're going to get is that notice requesting you to file. Now, if you left out something, some income, or you overstated something, and the numbers aren't right, that's a different situation that could trigger you being audited. But you. Not not filing 18 no you're good to go um just know you will get a letter saying hey submit me submit 18 tax return as soon as possible perfect now you have a freebie for us right a yeah so my team and so i wasn't sure how he was going to do it. so my team already created my cover page and everything so i'm going to put my table in it i'll send it to you for you to send it to your team with the links to everything as well because i wanted to see how we because i had it already designed and then my face was like oh well let us look at us okay you know what let me just take a step back and see what questions we get and then i can finish it up from there so i do have it i just need to now add so a few things in here so i'll add like my COVID link for all the resources there. Um, I'll also add the links to the abatement letter. I mean, I said to the abatement letter, to the abatement um, process there and everything that we talked about, but it's almost done. And I talked and I added in a table with like, okay, well, if you get canceled debt over 600, this is the ramifications behind it. If you have this, this is the ramifications, anything that impacted your credit. So yes, I just was like, okay, you know what? Let me just take a step back. Let me see what the groups and what questions they're answering. And then I'll give you a final premium that's compiled with everything that we talked about um, that I think uh, the, the ladies will love. Margo says uh, to make sure you do kind of, I think you have a video about the new W4, don't you? Um, I think I do, but I think that's for my private clients. Yeah, so what we could do, I'll see if Leo, um can maybe send that over to you i mean whatever would work i don't want to like take private information and kind of but it was just something that came up a lot because so many people don't understand <laughs> yeah the new w4 well see the problem is it's not only new w4 once they see that form that we showed them today the allowances right. they'll better understand it because okay, then they'll perfect. be able to look at their check and say okay hold on my check is three thousand base if I do two allowances, that means this is going to come out. Um, so I think that in conjunction with the W-4 form will bring everybody that much clarity um, regarding what they should be filing on their W-4 Awesome. Margo, her information is inside of the health center. All you got to do is log in, go to the health center, scroll down. You're going to see her under um, the recommendation for a tax expert. So all you have to do is click on. So it's easy for credit on fire members because she's already in there <laughs> and her information is in bosses on fire now you guys inside of credit makes sense i'm literally gonna she's gonna have it inside of her premium but you know for today if you want to post under video your information as well or give me okay. anything that i can put in the description of the video um or anything that you want me to add because after it comes from the group and goes into um the workinghomeschooler.com 
then, you know, anything you want me to put on there and how to reach out to you, the best, you know, yes. process, I guess, you know, definitely let me know because I knew this was something that a lot of us need help with. I mentioned how I suck with my taxes. Yes, having a dad that's a CPA and uh, I just never heard about it. And so that's how I know when you say, oh, I know I got the, um, the notices somewhere. Yeah, I, I've been there. Oh, I don't know how much I owe. I've been there too. Okay, then you get ready to call them. They're ignoring you. You're confused. I was too embarrassed to call my dad and be like, guess what your daughter did? You know what I'm saying? So I have been there. <laughs> I have been there. That's so why I'm like, listen, you got to hire somebody. You have to hire somebody mm -hmm. if you're not getting the help that you need or it's so confusing yes. for you, especially if you're a small business. There's no way that you should be, you can grow. I'm just be real. I, I wasn't gonna say there's no way you should be operating. That's true. But there's no way that you can grow to the level that you need to grow to if yes. you don't have not only a bookkeeper, but like she mentioned, a tax planning professional, a strategist, somebody that can strategize with you around your business and where you wanna grow to. So, and full is that. Like, I love that aspect of her business. Not just on a personal side. I love her for the business side, especially. Um, just because of how dope she is with that. So, all right. Thank you so much. Yes. No, thank you. Nativa. So I just see one more question. I think they're asking about this COVID, um, the stimulus. Oh, so if I can just answer that for them. Just yes, so I didn't see clarity. it. Well, thank you for noticing okay. me. <laughs> Perfect. So that was on um, Fate's, Fate's post that she put. So everyone is kind of asking if they're owing, will they take that money and apply it to their balance? No. They're going to send it. But the problem is, since you owe, they're going to more than likely send you a mail check. You're not going to be possibly in the bunch until around that mid-May when they've already gotten the process and Trump's stamp is on it and everything else. And they've concluded that you are eligible. So the problem most people are having is that one, you're owing. So the system is not smart enough to say, hey, okay, well, her income is only this amount. She's still qualified. They didn't put that trigger in. Number two problem is they don't have your bank account details on file. That's another problem. And then the last problem is, is that the fact that Trump wants his information on the checks. So since you're in that batch, you won't get your payment until around May, mid-May, first week of June. Yeah, that slowed things down quite a bit. I was like, how are you slowing down the money? Look, yeah. because you want your stuff. <laughs> yes. I he thought actually, he cared about us. Isn't that what he's always saying? I'm like, yes, he did. And in this interview, he was like, I don't know nothing about that. I'm like, <laughs> Okay, no. Uh, we are not about to get on that on this. Yes. Like, this is a beautiful live, and I know we have different political opinions, so we are about to keep this to a private combo about that. So, <laughs> yes. oh, all right, thank you again so much. I truly appreciate it. And yes, I'm going to get all of her contact information because this is legit like one of my favorite tax professionals because of how dope thank she is. Thank you. I want to make sure that you guys uh, reach out to her and Know that she's one of our wealth partners. I'll actually add your information inside of the file section. I haven't updated that in a while. Inside of Credit Makes Sense. That why those of you in Credit Makes Sense can kind of have a, a area for who I value and trust as uh, in areas that I don't specialize in. So I've already brought you in, um, a student loan professional and Credit on Fire members. You have three that I really, 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 really love and for different reasons. And now you have my tax professional. And mm -hmm. then tomorrow, put on fire members, you get um, an insurance. Another insurance professional is going to come in. Oh, um, that's good. Who I value as well. So, oh, my God. Did I okay, miss the yeah, answer I to my Facebook posted question? I don't know. I mailed my 2017. I see it. She said, I mailed my 2017 and 2018 federal tax on February 20th. IRS customer service unavailable. Anybody can confirm it's received my tax returns. Any idea about the backlog? Okay. So yes, yours, because you mailed it, yours is going to be so delayed and my apologies. Um, quick question. Did you at least put, if you're getting a refund, did you at least put your payment direct deposit information there? Because if you did, that will prevent you from having to get a mail check to you. They can skip that part. Um, but if you didn't do direct deposit because you were owing, then don't anticipate them even processing your return. You said you did it February, March, May. Let's say around the end of April, they should have started processing your return. You may not be eligible or hear updates from the stimulus until end of May. 
end of May because they have to process and they have to process it manually. So somebody have to actually go through your return. Okay, she did, she did put her direct deposit. So that at least put you in the ballpark of at least you can get direct deposit. That help me, let us know before we write out. And then you can tag her if she's available. Unless she is busy, so. <laughs> so let us know if that helps. Uh, B. And then I don't know if I can let her get back to her babies. Yeah. They out there. <laughs> Look, mine's are too smart. <laughs> All right, I think we are good to go. And I have to be mine too, you guys. You know, I'll get that. Oh, <laughs> I gotta feed my kids. So let me <laughs> so enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, Falashade. And if we miss anything, guys, just let us know inside of Court on Fire. Um, and then you know, we can kind of tackle it from there. But thank you so much again. No, and, thank uh, you. Hope you guys got value, especially inside of credit makes sense. You kind of get a sneak peek at some of the dopeness that credit on fire uh gets to have once a week. So uh, yeah. So I'll finish up the freemium and Leo send it right over to you and Faith, okay? Awesome. Have a good evening. No, thank you, Natalia. You have an amazing evening. Bye, guys. Bye.